Parents of Reddit, how did your son daughter's SO win you over? Story 1. I won my boyfriend's, now husband, parents over by throwing a party. It was his birthday and I had gotten a good number of people to show up for a surprise party. He was on the phone with his parents when he walked in and everyone yelled, Surprise! He got all teary-eyed and told his parents, I have to go. It's a surprise party. I didn't know I had so many friends. For good measure, I sent them photos of the party as well. His mom particularly liked the set of photos that showed my SO and friends battling a bomb-shaped grill that caught on fire and exploded. Edit. OMG, my first ever gold! Thank you, kind person. Wow, sounds like you really knocked it out of the park with that surprise party. Bet your husband's parents were impressed, especially with those hilarious grill explosion photos. Story 2. I'm the SO of the daughter in this story. My girlfriend's dad basically hated me until the time we drove together down to Monterey from Austin and had to make conversation for seven hours and pretend it wasn't awkward. He's an engineer, so I went with that and casually mentioned my desire to get a small CNC lathe for metal fabrication or possibly build a basic XY controller to attach to a traditional lathe. Turns out his final project for graduation at college was to build a CNC lathe. We nerded out and started discussing the pros and cons of stepper motors versus servos, then the conversation moved to Arduinos, and the rest is history. Now we get along handsomely, and it makes my girlfriend very uncomfortable. Story 3. I'll tell you the story of how my husband won over my dad. My dad has a sailboat, which he is kind of crazy about. My husband has a background in naval architecture. We went to visit my dad. And while we were on his boat in the marina, the guy in the slip next to us runs over. My boat is taking on water, he says. Come help me bail it out. Don't worry, responds my father. My son-in-law is a naval architect. Something to note at this point in the story. My now husband and I had only been dating for like eight months. We weren't even close to getting engaged, let alone married. But now all of a sudden boyfriend is his son-in-law. So now husband just goes with it. Sure. I, the son-in-law, will see if I can help. He gets on the guy's boat and sees that there's water seeping through the floorboards. He thinks this is weird, given that the pump is going and the boat isn't listing or anything. So he gets down, sticks his finger in the water, and licks it. It's fresh water, now husband says. Your bilge is leaking. Did you remember to turn off the hose after you finished filling up your fresh water tank? And that, my friends, is how my husband became a legend in Dad's marina and my dad's favorite person of all time. Edit. Because despite being with my husband for almost 10 years now, I still know cow about naval architecture. And gold! I'm so glad you guys got a kick out this story. All these years later, it certainly still cracks me up. Anyway, many thanks. No way! Your husband's a total hero. Saving a boat from sinking with just his know-how and a taste of water? That's some serious skill, and no wonder your dad loves him so much. Story 4. I know the exact moment I won my wife's family over. I could see it in her father's eyes. It was high school before we started dating. The first time I went over to her house, actually. Her father and two brothers are all pretty tall, and I'm average height. It's a very alpha male household, and they had this thing they like to do to potential boyfriends. So when my wife left the room to go to the bathroom or whatever, all three of them stood, lined up shoulder to shoulder, and loomed over me. Blank-faced, glaring down, no words, no motion. Just staring and looming. I found out later that her last boyfriend almost cried when they did this to him. I've always been really socially awkward, but an odd part of that awkwardness is that I'm never intimidated by people. I don't know why, but they just don't frighten me. I slowly stood up, looking them all in the eye, and then poked her dad right in the tummy. I said, boop. He stared for a second, and then a giant grin split his face. It turns out that he's a massive goofball. From that moment on, I was a member of the family. The whole dating and marriage thing was just a formality to them. Edit. Ah, thanks for the gold, guys. I'm glad my near murder could bring you some laughs. Story 5. Read the question wrong. So here's my real answer. I'm a martial arts instructor, among other things. I caught my daughter's boyfriend looking at my belt rack, fifth degree black belt, and trophies from when I was much younger. And he said, are all those yours? Yep. So you know how to throw someone? Yep. Could you teach me? How much of a setup did I need? I took him into the backyard and threw his skinny peach around for about 45 minutes. And every time he hit the ground, he got back up with a huge smile and said, that was awesome. Show me how. So I took him to my class with my daughter and had her practice throws on him. He never complained, never flinched, and never took offense. After class, I told my daughter I liked him. So she broke up with him. Edit. Thank you for the gold. Story 6. My wife won my parents over easily. Preface. Had an old Rottweiler named Max that was young at heart, but clearly showing his age. My previous girlfriends never petted him or gave him attention. He didn't crave it, but he wanted to be acknowledged. Fast forward a few years, and I bring my girlfriend, now wife, home for Christmas break. I introduced her to Max, and she immediately sat on the floor and rubbed him, petted him, and just gave him love that no other girlfriend gave him. 
I hadn't seen his little nubwag so quickly in a long time. He ended falling asleep with his head in her lap. Max is no longer with us, but at least I got his approval before he passed. I will never forget that day. I'm tearing up just thinking about it. That pillow is exactly where my wife sat. He passed away a year after this picture was taken. Story 7. Our daughter came home from college with a boy she had been dating for a few weeks. They weren't serious, but he lived too far away to go home for Thanksgiving. That weekend, her old high school flame dropped by. We didn't like him much. He had been very abusive when our daughter was dating him. When he showed up, he tried to convince our daughter to go someplace with him to talk things over. She didn't want to, and so he started getting loud and obnoxious. The new boyfriend was trying to give her some space and not be the possessive caveman type. But when he heard the old boyfriend call our daughter the C-word, he came out on the porch and threw a wicked punch at the guy. Unfortunately, he missed, and he got the worst of the ensuing scuffle before I could break it up. But he got a few good licks in, and I'm pretty sure some of them would leave nice bruises. Not that I condone brawling, mind you. Old boyfriend skulked off, and we brought the new boyfriend in and got him cleaned up. He was only 19, but he got an ice-cold beer with dinner. They dated a couple of years but eventually broke up. She's had a few boyfriends since, but he's the only one I ever addressed as son. Story 8. Not a parent, but I'll talk about how my white as wonder bread so found some common ground with my Middle Eastern parents. Eating meals together is a really important part of my culture. My current SO was willing to try anything and everything my mom put in front of him. My SO came from a household where his mother only ever cooked meat and potato types of meals, and they never ate out at restaurants, so he had a beginner's palate. Still, he tried everything from picked vegetables to rice with weird stuff in it, and even stews that looked like liquid poop. Fessenjohn, anyone? My mom is a sucker for anyone who will eat her food, so she started to like him a bit more after having him over for dinner. Edit. Rip my inbox. I will try to reply to as many of you as I can. Thank you for sharing your stories and love of Persian food. Story 9. My son was suffering from an acute case of testosterone poisoning, a.k.a. being a typical teenage boy. He hated us. He hated his siblings. He hated school. He hated life. He didn't believe in the concept of having a future. About the only thing keeping him breathing was his guitar. Then along came Jessie, not her real name. Absolutely gorgeous girl, talented. They met because he needed someone to sing the songs he was writing. Smart as heck, she got into college a year early, and just a joy to have around. To be honest, my wife and I fell in love with her long before our son did. He had to be smacked in the head a bit to even realize he was smitten. When he fell, he fell hard. And luckily, it was the same for her. Now, like I said, Jessie is a wonderful girl, so we would have loved her for her own merits regardless. But it's the effect that she's had on our son that made us fall in love with her. At first, after they started dating, my son was still a typical unpleasant person teenager. But Jesse must have seen something in him that we never could. He was still in peach around his family. But the first time she was around to see it, she called him on it. When he did poorly in school, she asked him how he expected to get into college and support a family. Implying with her, I suspect. So he started getting better grades. When he got frustrated with all of the social nonsense that goes down in high school, she got him to realize it was basically nonsense that wasn't worth it. And so on and so on. Little by little, she turned him into a human being. The culmination of all this came one day when Jesse was over at our house for a family dinner. He stood up and said that he realized he had been a real tool for a long time, and that he was sorry, and that he knew he had to be a better person. Then he thanked Jesse for giving him a reason to be a better person, and for being someone worth being better for. Hugs and tears all around. And then he made good on his promise. Today he's a son and a friend who I can be proud of. Frankly, if Jesse had never come into the picture, I doubt he'd be alive. They're still together junior year of college, and they got engaged a few weeks ago. At their wedding, I plan to say this. The old cliches about not losing a son but gaining a daughter doesn't apply because Jesse brought back to us the son we thought we had lost. And we can't gain a daughter because she has been that and more to us for close to seven years. Story 10. My grandmother has never liked any of my boyfriends. She always told me flat out that she didn't really like them, which hurt me immensely, but wasn't really out of character. Pretty much nothing I pursued or achieved was good enough for her. I resigned myself to the fact that she would never like anyone I brought home. She never really warmed up to my mother. Even though my mom is an amazing human being, no one was good enough for my dad in her mind. Then one day she surprised me. After meeting my SO for the first time, she told me, Well, I didn't expect to like him, but I did. He looks at you when you speak, listens to what you say, and responds in a way that shows genuine interest. That was it. That's all a guy had to do in order to impress my grandmother. I'm slightly horrified that she didn't see those qualities in any of the other men I brought home. That happened six years ago, and my SO and I are married now, expecting our first child. It's amazing how your SO managed to win your grandmother over.
with just a few simple gestures of genuine interest and attention. Looks like he's a keeper, especially since you're now expecting your first child together. Congratulations! Story 11. My now husband, David, and I met online and were in a LDR while I was in college near Duluth, MN. We had never met in person before and I invited him to come see me. I told my mom about the meeting and she was really paranoid. Call me every day so I know you're alive type of thing. He came and we really hit it off and were having a lot of fun. After day, two mom was convinced that he at least wasn't an axe murderer. And after a couple of more days, I decided that I was into him enough that he should meet my parents. I know, poor guy. But this was a good thing in the long run. So I invited them up on that Saturday. They picked us up and we all went out to lunch and made some polite conversation. And we decided we should take a small trip to Split Rock Lighthouse a famous lighthouse on Lake Superior about an hour from Duluth. I remembered that I left my camera in my dorm so we swung by so I could pick it up. I left David in the car with my folks, alone for just a few minutes. While I was gone, my dad joked, Quick, let's drive off! To which David, who has a very sarcastic dry wit, responded, I knew that one way or another this trip would end with me dead in the woods. There was a shocked pause, and then my parents started cracking up. When I returned, it was clear the ice had broken, and they relayed what had been said to me. My mom was like, I think he'll fit right in. She often relayed this story characterizing it as the moment she decided that David was right for me. Luckily, I agree, haha. <laughs> story 12. I am a white American man married to a Japanese woman. Here's the story of how I won over her dad, then got him to hate me, then won him back. While we were dating, I was living and working in Japan, and I won over her dad because I could tell puns in Japanese, his favorite style of humor, and because we shared common interests in films and music. We also just got along well in general. However, he was very old-fashioned, and so my then-girlfriend opted to not ever tell him that we were officially dating, even though it was obvious. My company ended up transferring me to Canada, so my girlfriend and I decided to get married in a hurry so she could go with me. When we announced this to her dad, his eyes instantly turned red as he realized his daughter was leaving the house in the country. Tearfully, he asked me what my plans were for my career, how I would take care of her, etc. Somehow, none of my answers seemed to please him and the night ended with me feeling like I had messed up up pretty bad. He didn't speak to me for more than three weeks, and I knew he resented me for taking his daughter. Then my parents and three of my siblings came to Japan to be there when we signed the legal marriage documents, even though we were planning to have a real wedding one year later. Both families got together for a fancy and my family saved my peach. They brought gifts for my future in-laws, told stories, jokes, and treated them like royalty. My future in-laws loved my family, and by the end of the week, I was newly married and my new wife's father treated me like a son of his own. We have gotten along famously ever since, and I credit that all to my amazing parents, brothers, and sisters. Funny end note, we had a real wedding one year later at my home in Chicago. My wife's father's speech ended up being the highlight of night. It went something like this, paraphrasing. 150 years ago, Admiral Perry of the U.S. Navy came to Japan, pointed his ship's cannons at Tokyo, and demanded that Japan open itself to the West for trade. In much the same way, James came into our lives and pointed his cannons at my family. But just as the U.S. and Japan came to be close allies and friends, so too has James grown to be a close friend and member of our family. Everyone told me it was the best part of the wedding. Story 13. My parents are pretty traditional and really liked the idea of any potential boyfriends asking my dad's permission to date me. However, after three years of undergrad, living away from home and inevitable casual BFS, they had kind of come to accept that this was not going to happen. I made this joke after a one-night stand, made it clear he wanted to date me. We went on a few dates and things were progressing well. However, I was surprised one day to hear that my father and brother were coming to visit the city for a day. Turns out this guy had contacted my brother on Facebook and was taking him and my father out to lunch to ask permission to date me. This one-night stand is now my husband. Story 14. My son's GF won us over by helping us bring him back to dressing like a human being. Despite being an olive-skinned, Thanks to my distant Italian relatives and my wife being Hispanic middle-class boy from the suburbs, he dressed like a hardcore rapper. He looked ridiculous, as besides everything else, he was almost six tall, so sagging pants, shorts have to be elephant-sized to work. I'm not sure why he went through that phase, as even during it, he was fairly well-mannered. There's a lot of other reasons, not least of them being that she is the daughter of a childhood friend of my wife, and thus from the same ungodly remote town she's from. Current population, 150-ish. I cajoled and demanded and he didn't change. She batted her eyelashes and he did. She won him and us. Story 15. This is a story from my SO's parents. It was first year of university and it's still summery outside. Every night for the first week here was drinking and partying on the quad and in the dorms. Well, at the time I had met my SO once in the hallway and that was it. 
Well, one night she goes out and gets blasted because her previous BF was always partying despite her protests. Well, she nearly passed away of alcohol poisoning that night. She was rushed off to the hospital for detox and such. I had no idea this had happened. I only saw the ambulance pull up to my dorm building. The next morning around 5 a.m. she was knocking on my door, still inebriated from the night before. I didn't understand anything she was saying because she just kept saying she woke up in a room, locked to a bed with needles in her arm, in a thick Slovakian accent too. She failed to mention she was at the hospital, so I let her in my dorm, sat her on my bed, made her a cup of Earl Grey, and put Tarzan on my telly and had her watch it. Then I slowly tracked down her phone, wallet, and keys she had lost all over campus the night before. Then I bought her a giant 2L bottle of water and food. I brought her to her room and gave her the food and then some Advil. She told her parents all this and they were very happy someone had helped her. Later that week, she started inviting me everywhere and we eventually became best friends and then even more than that. Well, Christmas break rolls around and she left before me to go skiing with her family. I was texting her asking where she and her family were skiing. They were at a mountain not far away. I asked her how happy she would be if I came the next day. She was thrilled but thought I was blowing hot air. To her surprise, I was at her lodge the next day after a 12-hour bus ride. She couldn't believe it and her parents were impressed that I went through all that trouble. I spent the next three days skiing and going to hot springs, and then I bust back to the university to finish my last final. Three years later, I am still with her and her parents still highly approve of my for all the things I do for her. Sorry for the wall of text, but it's a big story. Story 16. I won my father-in-law over the first day I met him. We met on Thanksgiving. The girlfriend took me into a room separate from all the other family members where he was waiting. He looks me over, shakes my hand and says, So my daughter tells me, you're a professional wrestler? I confirm that fact. He leans in and says, go with it. Her father then grabs me by the hair and drags me into the living room with a large chunk of her extended family, throws me over the couch and yells, Don't you ever touch my daughter like that? I try to get back up, but he lays me out with another punch and kicks me out the door. The family was shocked and confused until we come back into the house and he introduces me as his daughter's new boyfriend and we have a laugh about it. He loves to tell that story. He even told it at the wedding eight years later. I am very happy to have him as a father-in-law. Story 17. Not a parent, but how I won my in-laws over was pretty harrowing funny. My wife and I knew each other for years, but having done the long distance thing, I didn't meet her family until we eloped. I met the in-laws the day before the wedding. Due to the madness, though, I didn't get to know them until a short while later. Visiting them for the weekend, my wife's mom said I could help myself to anything in the fridge. Me, my wife, and her brothers went out drinking, and when I came back, they urged me to take liberties with any leftovers, which I, of course, had no problem with. Stumbling upon a bag full of bacon, the cow was equivocal to manna from heaven. Unbeknownst to me, though, mom-in-law had cooked it in preparation for one of her kids' graduation parties the next day. I had the misfortune of seeing her wake up, walk to the fridge, discover that I had eaten all of her bacon, and start bawling. She was so stressed about the party that this was the straw that broke the mother-in-law's back. It was my first real impression on her, and I done messed up up. The rest of the fam was really cool about it, and assured me she would get over it. I felt terrible about it, though. The next time I visited them, I didn't say anything about it. Still too fresh. But I wore a shirt I made that had big, bold letters saying, Sorry I ate your bacon. We've bonded over the trauma ever since. Story 18. I don't know about when it happened for sure, but the moment I honestly felt accepted by my SO's family was when we had just gotten back from our very first road trip together. We drove to Miami from Houston and stayed at SeaWorld Hotel next to Universal Studios. Anyways, I was having a beer and shooting pool with her dad and grandpa, when suddenly her dad looks at me and says, You know you're the first boyfriend to make it through a vacation with my daughter and still be in love with her when you get back. I wasn't surprised after the trip I'd just had, but he was right. I still loved her and that had only grown through the past vacation. He asked what the worst part was and I told him it was when my GF, his daughter, had wanted to do something and I told her, no, because it wasn't a good idea. The look of utter shock on his face was unexpected. Then her grandpa chimed in, same look of shock. You told her, no? Then her dad goes, and lived? Then they started laughing and instead of asking me to get the beer, her dad handed me one. I felt respected a bit and at the least accepted as a man within her family. Edit. Clarification on GF's behavior. The reason for shock was that she had never had a boyfriend that stood up to her. They were glad I wasn't a pushover. That's all. Her mother also commented to her, she told me about it after the fact, that I have the patience of a saint. Her actions on the trip? First off, let me explain a bit. My SO is a very high-strung individual who has had traumatic events take place in her past. No, I won't go into any more detail. 
She has a script now for high anxiety, legitimately attained after blood work and has regular meetings with her physician. So imagine being with a still relatively new boyfriend, we'd only known each other about six months, away from home and on a very busy freeway that passes through small towns in backwoods Alabama and Florida. Very stressful for anyone. But throw in the fact that she wasn't yet on medication for her imbalance, she was having a rough time of things. Metaphorical example of the problems we fought about, until we both broke down and had a heart-to-heart -heart at the end of the week, which is where we calmly sat and discussed what was really bothering us. We are standing in a field of yellow daisies. Sunny out, good mild weather, when she would decide the daisies should have been tulips, and then it's my fault we didn't find the right field. Again, metaphor showing how pointless the fight was, and I did not help the situation at all. When dealing with things that bother me, especially if it's someone I care for, I will put up a wall of unpleasant person. Seriously, I get mean when I'm frustrated. She's anxious over nothing and thus adds to the storm. Not pretty. We are now settled in quite well and have been together for three years, living in the same apartment for 1.5 years. Yes, sometimes we fight over silly things, but in the end we always find a solution to the problem and then put it into action. She's learned that when I do voice a no, it's because of a good reason and no longer questions it. In turn, I show respect and do the same. If it confuses one of us, we ask later when we are at home and calm. I love this woman, and I'm secretly working on a way to propose to her. That is all. Story 19. Ugh, get ready for a dumb one. I have parents that have driven me to that R-raised but narcissist sub. Not the worst out there, but they have their issues, primarily along the lines of self-absorption, father, and emotional abuse, mother. They were so cruel to my ex that he started to have anxiety attacks around them, and his only crime was that he was shy. They were not the reason we broke up after five years and an engagement, but the stress they caused was definitely a contributing factor. So new BF shows up, he is warned in advance, and all the usual smiling passive-aggressive insults start. It takes him one session to realize what I had been talking about, and he's got his defenses slash, I'm so nice, how could you not love me? Play going, but nothing is working. My dad thinks he's God's gift to every single one of you, and you're lucky to have him. Unfortunately. He pretty much had it all. Tall, good-looking, fairly intelligent, charismatic, funny, and two parents who both retired young and spoiled him. He still thinks of himself as that amazing 20-year-old stud muffin and has the maturity and usefulness of such. So it's been six months and it's Easter. We're celebrating in typical wasp style with some family we all hate but invite anyway and my SO. To keep the demon children, one used to follow my ex around saying, I hate you. You're going to pass away? She was 11. As far away from the kitchen as possible, my mother had bought cheap little six shooter Nerf guns and told us all to go outside and shoot each other. Two teams were made and I preferred to watch, as inevitably every match came down to my SO and my younger brother, who I love very much and is awesome, despite him being our parents' golden child. Seeing them take it way too seriously, dodging behind cars and shouting elaborate insults was much fun. Meanwhile, demon female cousin would just stand next to SO and shoot him repeatedly in the face. We think she had a crush. Everyone heads in, with dad in front of us and us two lagging in the rear. For reasons I still can't explain, SO shoots his Nerf gun in the air, stands under it, and tries to get it on his glasses. Misses. Tries again, right as dad is turning around. This time, the dart goes straight up, down, and hits the glasses square on. When he looks back down, he's got the dart sticking on there. My dad explodes with shock, awe, and respect. That is obviously the coolest trick shot ever in the history of Nerf trick shots. He goes tearing into the house to tell my mother all about it, even though she's sweating over a stove and could care less. He grilled my SO about it and reenacted it at the Easter dinner table. For months, if my SO was being introduced to someone new, Dad told them this story of the coolest shot he had ever seen, which is probably not the worst first impression to give someone, but still. He brought it up at our wedding and recently told me my SO is his favorite child. My mother came around because he fixes stuff while my dad is useless. We'll probably reiterate this on his deathbed. Story 20. My sister's boyfriend actually won us all over by being genuinely the most hardworking and amazing guy we have ever met. The thing is, he's very overweight, short, balding, sweaty all the time and not that funny. But oh no, is he smart, caring, intuitive, helpful, cheerful, dedicated? And did I mention smart? Recently, I got really drunk all by myself in my house alone. Crying over an ex. It was bad, really bad. My sister texted me and, due to our relationship, she knew something was up when I didn't text her back. Not that she's overprotective or anything. It's just that we know each other that well. She couldn't drive at the time, so she sent him at midnight across town to my house just to see how I was doing. I was not doing well. He sat me down on the couch and talked me down and gave me some really great advice on looking for the right girl and how to move past this last one. 
He is sincerely one of the greatest men I've ever met in my life. Story 21. Probably too late to join, but this is a great story. We hated our daughter's SO before we even met him. She's a high-achieving, beautiful girl, smartest of all my kids, apple of her dad's eye. She began dating a guy eight years older, no education after high school, still living at home with his parents. He was covered in tattoos, was a longtime smoker, no career plans in sight. My daughter was 19 at the time and well headed to med school. After meeting him, she told us she was dropping out of college. Talk about parents' worst nightmare, our only daughter. Turns out she had been seriously stressed for a number of years, trying to keep up with family and parental expectations, working toward a career she had no interest in, and was suffering from severe depression. This guy listened and supported her, and when she decided to end it all, he was the one who found her and saved her life. Spend a few days in the ICU with your kids struggling for her life, with her SO constantly beside her talking, caring, touching her, even though through her coma she probably couldn't hear him. Watch him support her through the horrible days that followed, with the memory loss and severe mood swings and continued depression. See your daughter grow stronger through the steady support of someone who believes totally in her value and loves her for who she is, not who he wants her to be. After those weeks, even months, you will see that tattoos don't matter, education doesn't matter, life circumstances don't matter. What matters is that someone knows and loves your child. Her SO is still a part of our family even though they are no longer together. He turned out to be a wonderful person with many qualities that are rare in today's world. I learned an important lesson about judgment through our relationship with him. What a journey! Despite our initial reservations, our daughter's SO showed us the true meaning of love and support during her darkest times. His unwavering care and devotion proved that stereotypes mean nothing when it comes to genuine connection. Story 22 Not a parent, but a sister who is fiercely protective of her brothers. My eldest brother's SO was terrified of me. I'm quite aloof, I get it. The defining moment of my coming to love her was when we visited the zoo. On the way in, she saw a little girl getting a butterfly face painted on her. She, aged 28, wanted the same thing. My brother said, no, no way, don't be ridiculous, etc. She said nothing more about it, just went about her day. Hour or two later, she went to the bathroom. She took a while. She returned with a butterfly on her face and the biggest smile I have ever seen. Her managing to cause this look of total despair, but also love on my brother's face, was the moment. Edit. Just in case you're wondering, my brother is not a control bad person. It was cutesy flirtatious kind of behavior on both their parts. No need to raise alarm bells. Story 23. Telling this story from my perspective and how I kind of got in with my now father-in-law at the time. I was a bartender at this sushi restaurant in San Diego, and the bar was attached to the sushi bar too. So oftentimes I would exchange drinks with the sushi chefs for sushi. This happened for a couple of months to the point where there was a pretty good thing going of being drunk on the job and getting our fill of sushi. So I was BFFs with one of the chefs, older guy. We'd hang out all the time during work, make jokes, drink afterwards, and call it a day. Well, I start seeing this girl, now wife, and suggested she come visit me while I'm working the bar so I could comp her a drink, and so she does. Little did I know that my drinking buddy and owner of Ultra Sharp Knives was apparently her father. As she walks in, he yells, Hey, babe! Come to visit your pops. As she replied, No, actually here to see... There was a moment of silence. Followed by, All right, that's great, I love this guy. And now I'm regarded as the son he never had. Story 24. My wife's dad has a very nice wakeboarding boat he loves more than anything. I went out on the boat with him and other family, including my wife, for a day of hanging out on the lake. Several hours later and several beers later, we drove the boat back to the marina. Once there, he realizes he's the only one who can back the truck trailer down the boat ramp and then dock the boat on the trailer properly. However, it's a holiday weekend, and there's a large line of boaters waiting to load, so he wouldn't have time to back down the trailer then get back on the boat to pilot it onto the trailer without people going ape-cow mad. Realizing his predicament, I mention I've been driving boats since I was five years old. So he reluctantly disembarked from the boat onto the shore to get the truck while I was left as acting captain of the SS If You Scratch, This Boat Eat Will and You. I docked the boat on that trailer on the first try quickly and perfectly straight and balanced. That's easy for a little John boat outboard, but a very large 28-foot wakeboarding boat, it can be difficult for even seasoned pros. After that, he said I could take the boat out whenever I wanted to, even without him. Translation, I love you more than my own flesh and blood. Story 25. Not the parent in this story, but after I gave birth to my son and was resting in the hospital room, my FIL came to visit. While waiting for my husband to get back from the cafeteria, FIL told me that he always liked me, but I really won him over when I opted to just run away and elope with my husband without telling anyone. He said that it was pretty much at that point that he realized how much I loved his son, and he knew that for me, getting married wasn't about making a big show of things. And I wasn't one of those girls that wanted a wedding, 
not a marriage. Plus, I gave him his first grandson. That always helps. Story 26. I met my son's girlfriend when my dog had to have emergency surgery for bloat. I couldn't afford the down payment the emergency clinic wanted me to put down. And I called my son crying because I thought we were going to have to put our family dog down. He called his girlfriend who works at a vet clinic, and she had our dog admitted for surgery that day. While she was admitting him, I kept crying and told her I could do a payment plan. But she told me that we would figure it out later. She brought my dog back to my house the next day and told me not to worry about the bill. A good Samaritan had paid for it. I had never cried so hard in my life. This was a $2,000 bill. I couldn't believe that there were good people still left out in the world and wondered who the selfless person was that was willing to pay it. About a week later, I was talking to my son and asked out of curiosity if his girlfriend received any discounts at her clinic. He told me that she only pays at cost for medications and receives services for free, then said, how do you think you didn't pay for anything? She paid for all the medications herself. That was when she won me over. Story 27. I won over my girlfriend's mom by approaching her and saying hello when I saw her at a cell phone store. Apparently, she really liked that. I guess it showed her that I was a nice guy. Her dad was a bit different. A rather reserved man, didn't talk to much, and when he did, it was usually to poke fun at me or someone else. It took a while for him to warm up to me, mostly through making fun of him in return and fixing his computer. What I think really got her dad was the time I managed to trick him into eating a cat treat. I just went up to him and handed him a cat treat. Without hesitation, he ate it. After telling him that he just ate a cat treat, I was forced to eat a hot pepper that they were growing in the garden. It was pretty freaking hot, but I deserved it. So that's that. Her mom is awesome, and her dad is still quiet, but that's just how he is. Story 28. I started dating this girl back in high school, who was new and didn't come from the best background. She talked about how strict her parents were all the time, and I always wanted to meet them. But she kept trying to discourage me. I was still very eager to meet them. End up dropping her off to school one day at the end of her driveway, and there her stepdad is. Huge oil rig worker with his arms crossed just staring at me all the way until I drove out of view. Eventually, I invited myself inside without her knowing after dropping her off, only to be greeted by her mother, who my girlfriend described as the worst one. She was a very skinny, witchy woman reminding me of Uma Thurman in Pulp Fiction while she was smoking a cane. Absolutely rips me apart about my nerve to come in. Size, crappy car, nose, just everything. I took it like a champ. I kept on visiting her house after that to hang out after school and was greeted the same for about a month. Then one night I drive over and she is with her family outside drinking. I walk inside as they just stare silently at me, and I go inside and go into my girlfriend's bedroom who has the door locked and looks unhappy and stressed. We watch a movie and all of a sudden we hear her mom calling us down. Ignore her, please, says my girlfriend. Eventually we give in and head downstairs. Turns out her mom is twice as bad drunk. She rips into me with insults with their family around, then proceeds to start ripping into my girlfriend. She just brings up her past boyfriends and her bad history and compares them to her situation to me. A lot of the stuff I just didn't want to hear. I couldn't imagine how bad my girlfriend felt. She storms off crying and her mom just laughs and calls her a crybaby. I chase my girlfriend for a bit, then turn around and go back to her mother. I absolutely explode yelling at her mom. I tell her about how she is a horrible mother who doesn't care about her daughter, how she is disrespectful, and just go on and on. When I was done, her family was silent and she looked like she was about to terminate me. After what seemed like forever, she tells me politely about how she disagrees with and how I don't know about the life of that family enough to make such assumptions. About an hour of me talking deeply with her family, my girlfriend shyly comes out, sits down, and holds my hand. Her mom looks at the both of us, smiles, and says, I like this one. From then on, everything was great. I just learned her mom was a brutally straightforward and protective person, and her scary stepdad was a teddy bear who secretly played WOW. So we bonded over that. I fell in love with her family. Her mom told that story to my parents recently, so I figured I would share. We broke up a while ago. Turned out my girlfriend was a terrible person. Her family practically disowned her after we broke up, but they are still tight with me. Story 29. My mom didn't like my SO at all at first. I went to college, broke up with a boyfriend I had back home that she loved, and moved in with a guy she didn't approve of because of his religion, and she thought he was dark and evil. He's pagan and probably the nicest guy I know. Then one day he and I drove to their house to tell them the news that they didn't want to hear. I was pregnant. Mom cried and told me I ruined my life, and my normally quiet boyfriend got angry and stood up to her saying, Why would you say that to her? She never wanted to be in college anyway. It's better that she has to drop out early on than spend her life in debt doing something you forced her to do. Her life isn't over just because she isn't staying in college. No one had ever stood up to my mom before, and from that moment on, she had a ton respect for him. Now she absolutely loves him. 
I was expecting W tree edit. You don't have to go to college to be considered doing something with your life. Just because someone is pagan doesn't mean they're evil. And the expecting World War III jokes were funny the first time. Then you all beat it like a dead horse. Story 30. This is my parents' story. My grandma hated my dad, mainly because of his nationality. Even after she begrudgingly allowed my mom to marry him, they had no ceremony. My grandma still hated my dad. My parents moved to America to study. My grandma went to visit and my dad took the opportunity to try to bond with her by taking her to an amusement park. They went on rides and roller coasters. Long story short, my grandma fainted because she had low sugar and didn't eat. My dad kind of forgot because he was having fun. He took care of her and for some weird reason he became her favorite son-in-law from then on. My grandma can be weird. Story 31. The story of how my grandparents met is quite interesting. All throughout high school, my grandfather had a huge crush on a girl in his class. He left various things on her doorstep without ever leaving his name. She lived down the street. Eventually, he wrote unnamed letters to her. This was the 40s, remember? And after some time, she started writing back. He finally gained the courage to introduce himself senior year. He went to her house. When she answered the door and he told her who he was, she slammed the door in his face. Devastated, he turned to walk home and bumped into her little sister. She was coming home from work. The two hit it off. They dated, got married, and 65 years later, they have seven children and 23 grandchildren. As for my grandmother's sister, she never got married. And now at every family party, we hear the same story over and over. Glad I could finally share it elsewhere. Story 32. My current SO lives three hours away with her parents. I drive there and spend every other weekend there. I'm kind of a gentleman and I'm always polite and such. So I already had that impression with her mom. One particular weekend in October, my SO and I were planning on going to a Halloween party in a couple weeks. I was going to be V from V for Vendetta. This is something I am every couple years, so the costume was already complete. She was going G to go as Alice from Alice in Wonderland. She was actually making the dress. That evening, she sat in the kitchen sewing the dress. I sat next to her playing emulated SNES games on my tablet. We talked every now and then, but we were mostly silent while she focused on her work and I focused on Super Metroid. Her mom sat in the living room watching TV. This was the setup from 11 p.m. to 4 a.m. when my SO finally finished her dress and we went to sleep. I woke up before she did that morning and chilled in the living room with her mom watching TV. Her mom suddenly turned to me and said, I can't believe you sat with her in near silence for five hours patiently while she worked on that dress. That's amazing. None of her previous boyfriends would have ever done that. You're so patient. You two are going to be perfect for each other. I think she thought that I didn't do anything the entire time that my SO worked on the dress, just watching her. Little does the know that I just got lost in Super Metroid for hours. Edit Grammar. Story 33. Obligatory. Not a parent. But my SO's father refused to meet me at first, saying something along the lines of, if he comes near me, I'll terminate him, when she suggested it. This gradually reduced to break his legs, then punch him, etc., over the course of about a year and a half, until we finally met. His previous threats weren't mentioned once and he was perfectly pleasant with me. I guess in that time I'd proven myself via his daughter and he'd had time to get used to the idea. So now jokes that he likes me more than he likes her. My previous SO's father grew up in a rough area of town and was from a fairly notorious family in that area. His first words to me were, so you're the guy who's shagging my daughter then? I managed to resist the urge to cow myself and instead matter of fact nodded and answered, Yup, he shook my hand warmly, saying, nice to meet you, and has been fine with me since. Story 34. My GF's mom used to be a high school administrator or a principal or something. Super strict, very suspicious about everything for no goddamn reason other than kids are never up to any good. Now we're both in our early 30s, mind you. My GF kind of randomly moved away from home from the Caribbean to the west coast of the U.S. to live with a guy they had never heard of before with their only granddaughter. So her mom got on a plane and flew out to help her settle in. But really, it was to check me out. So I turned on the charm and got stonewalled. It was not effective at all. I would struggle to try and charm her, but she was on to me. Nothing I tried would penetrate her unwavering shield of distrust. I thought she might leave and go home and give the rest of the family a bad impression of me. Until one day they go out shopping. And I wander into the kitchen and see a bunch of good stuff they'd bought to eat. So I start making one of my signature dishes that I know my GF loves and clean up the kitchen as I go. They arrive and find the house smells of deliciousness. She comes to the dining room to find me laying out the meal and have all our places set at the table. She inspects the kitchen to find I've cleaned it all up and there's no work to be done, just food to be eaten. Then she tries my food and she looks at me. She looks at me like she was looking at me for the first time again. Instead of cool, steely eyes of distrust, I now saw warm, caring eyes brandishing a wide smile. That's when I knew I'd won her over.
Seems she worried about her daughter being taken care of out here with no family at all to support her. But once she saw I was capable in the kitchen and did things because I wanted to, not because I was told to. Now her and I are good friends and she makes me call her mom.